Hello and welcome back to Soul Blazer. This is Bio Enchanted, and today we'll be continuing on the mountain. Or as the anguish puts it, the Solar Mountain House. So let's don our mushroom shoes and get to that ice, shall we? Look, we can just walk straight up pretty much to get there now. Just making sure I have some herbs just in case. It's always good to be certain because it always sucks to die. <laughs> that should be a bumper sticker. It always sucks to die. Let's just tank this idiot and move on. These guys are just going to be annoying me. I do not care. So it's one of them gone and just out on this guy. There we are. Let's move on properly, shall we? Because this is me making sure I haven't missed any side paths or anything like that, now that I can actually walk on the ice. But this kind of blocks the area off in such a way there's really only one way to go. I quite like this, it's also been kind of a big, weird, confusing loop, but then when you can actually walk on it, it becomes quite clear. It's a very linear little section. Released her, let's move on, shall we? We see what we're trying to get to, and now we can walk properly, we can actually get there. First, let's take care of these bats, though, because they are terrible. And for some reason, this one, for some reason, this particular area, sometimes enemies only spawn from some of these when you get really close to them, so they can kind of catch you off guard, and that makes getting them to show up really annoying. But at least that's dealt with now, so let's move on. I kind of hate when games do that, though. It's really irritating. But it's just... It's just give us all the things to kill, and let's just do it, you know? These kind of bouncy guys have kind of weird hitboxes because they're constantly out vertical and then they're on the slopes and the slope's constantly pulling you down because it's a nice slope. And the mushroom shoes don't work anymore on the slopes. Basically, we're, we're done with the mushroom shoes now. <laughs> they don't work anymore in any of these areas, so they're just kind of useless now. The whole remainder of the dungeon, pretty much, is going to go not find much use in the mushroom shoes. <laughs> I quite like seeing the mountain kind of big, to create gradually carved out by the uh, things you collect. That's a really nice, nice, really nice kind of visual thing. But it's not just always there, just building furniture with it. It's actually like digging out the entire cavern. I'm doing bad at these spinny guys. At least I killed a lot of things very quickly, so that wasn't too bad. I don't like these teleporting enemies at all, though. They're very annoying. That is the kind of easy to predict and easy to kind of pick up on and take care of. Now, before we grab any of these, we'll just make sure they're all clear, because otherwise it would spawn a few of those green slimes and that would be annoying. Well, it would if it did the fade out like it's doing here. If I'd gone for this one first, it would have spawned the green slimes back. I really like these three snails. We'll see why in a few minutes. They're really cute. I like how this isn't even like an area, it's just like an ice hill. It's just a hill of ice, that's all it is. It's not part of anything in particular, there's no big like local name for it or anything, it's just it's a hill. These trees are annoying because they just kind of explode if you touch them or hit them in any way, including with magic. They're just kind of there for a booby trap. And of course, because of these really narrow corridors, it's really hit to hit, hard to hit these bats and to get in a good position to hoover up their magic and stuff. It's just a really irritating area to actually do anything in. I really don't like the bats because of the erratic motion they make. And just general... All this... I missed that one, yeah. Press the wrong buttons and didn't manage to hoover it, which was a shame.
So at a certain point in the game though, it kind of stops throwing these kind of enemies at you and it becomes the easiest to just use a sword. So at a certain point, it won't be nearly as bad. We'll be able to really gather as many points as we can because we won't really be using them that much. So anyways, as you may have seen those from in the game, aren't very magic abilities. You know, they don't really do much for magic. Magic doesn't do much against them, are there? So generally the sword's the default, the go-to weapon. There we go. And this is really annoying when you have these kind of bats on this slopey part, because now it's just you're constantly moving down, having to compensate, having to avoid getting dragged into the bat spinny path. It's a real nightmare to do anything there. And we're not going to have any hope of hoovering that up, so let's just go around, shall we? Around the exploding Christmas tree. Well, once we've done this type of bigger boom anyway. Whoops. Wrong slope. Yeah, this area is really annoying. I don't like this part of the dungeon. It's just frustrating to go through. And kind of stupid, really. So tank this guy. Oh, and that spawns more enemies. It's always fun. It doesn't give us any kind of an easy way out or anything. Yeah, this level is just... It's, I'm not a big fan of this dungeon overall. It's just... It's not as interesting as the others. It's mostly blue, and it's just kind of... Aesthetically, it's the least interesting, in my opinion. And also, it's just parts of a mountain, and it's just got some of the most annoying enemies to deal with. I just don't like dealing with them. There we go, dealt with that nonsense, so let's move on, shall we? Even more of a slope. Yeah, it's also kind of repetitive as well. There's not really much that goes on here, it's just... This. This forever. I mean, at least that spawned both the enemies at once, that wasn't too bad. These guys are the worst when they appear on the slope, it's just such an annoying thing for them to do. Like this, this is just... come on, really? Because of course when they start spinning, you can't hurt them, but they can still hurt you on contact. It's just really irritating to deal with. Magic's kind of reliable, because by the time you'd hit them with magic, or by the time you fired off the magic and aimed it, they'd probably fired already and started to disappear, or we'll just end up phasing right through the magic, and it's just an annoying thing. But as at least it's heavy completely cleared out, so let's just switch out to something we actually have use for. The power bracelet. I quite like this area though, it's got an interesting idea to it. Probably it makes these guys much less annoying because they die much quicker. You can't even like bait where they're going to land as well. Like they don't really appear in any particular direction relative to you. It just kind of seems random. There we go. It's hard to get lined up sometimes on a keyboard. <laughs> So this is the icy field of rainfall. Oops, we triggered those trees. Oh well. Take out these bats from here, because the bats are just the worst things. Bats are always really annoying in games though, it's just something that everyone always says. Is that, and just because it's true, bats are just generally awful in games. Which is the same because they're really cute in real life. But these fruit bats aren't. <laughs> I mean, vampire bats have probably have their charms as well, and uh, you know, uh, micro bats are fairly uh, cute in their own way. 
but really it's clang foxes that are really adorable. <laughs> Of course, small of these are showing up. That'll do. Let's move on then. Finish our circuit of this area first. So let's take care of whatever's outside of this big wall of ice. Make sure everything's been picked up here. Also, it mentions uh, be patient, and that's why, because some there are actually some of these little islands that have little bridges leading towards them. We've just got a new sword from doing that. We get more gems now from monsters, which will be very helpful considering we're running kind of low now. Roger, that's not the way to that one. At least not that particular island. Of course, I forgot to put my mushroom shoes back on. This is the one area you actually need them again, which is just annoying, but fine. The mushroom shoes are really kind of very... get very little use. They're just kind of uh, one of those items in a lot of RPGs that you get where you have them, use them twice, then never need them again. Just the inventory filler, really. It's always a shame when that happens, because there's always a lot of tools in games that seem like they'd be a lot of fun and then you never get any use of them, like the uh, spinning top thing from the uh, Zelda Twilight Princess. Spinning top's really fun to use, it's just it's not much use, and that's a real shame. Uh, it's the same with this kind of uh, thing with like the, uh, I mean certainly the mushroom shoes aren't used much, but you could have figured out something with them, potentially. Like, even maybe just have them be able to stick to other surfaces of the nice. Like, maybe have slippery slime in a later area or something like that, or... I don't know, just something along those lines, something else to use the mushroom shoots for. Other than just, okay, I've used them, I'm done with them now. And now we have a new bridge! I want to take care of this bloody bat. Go to that bridge, I can't remember now. We'll see. Oh, there's a pretty masterful dodge there. Oh, yeah, this time the bats are actually on the actual world map and not in the monster lair. That's why they weren't showing up from the monster lair this time. Sometimes that happens, as you've seen. Some of the enemies can be in more real areas, while some of them are just kind of. Uh, just in, hang out in their lairs waiting to spawn, which is a slightly more visually boring uh, way of doing that. But here we have our shortcut. And yeah, here we go. Now we're going this way. At least they're not bats. This will do. I can kill these with swords and that's fine. This grandpa's got a very interesting setup. That'll be interesting. Make sure there's nothing else I've missed around here, like no more invisible bridges and all that. That guy can wait. I believe we have everything we need here now. So let's move on, shall we? Let's see what we've restored. First, these guys are quite cute. I quite like these three snails, that's just an adorable idea to have a little snail race. And of course, the racetrack is actually caused by carving out all this rock as well, so there's actually a reason for that. It's giving the snails not just somewhere to live, but somewhere to actually run as well.
And here we have a snail race, exciting! Who will win? Uh, they just do this around the entire circuit, the entire level, at this exact speed. It takes forever. So I hope you don't mind if I don't follow them the entire circuit. They don't really say anything, you, you just kind of loop infinitely as far as I'm aware. They don't finish a lap and say something funny, I checked that before when I was first playing the game. And yeah, that clarifies it. It's not the mush the mushrooms aren't talking about themselves. They're actually talking about these uh, these these, mo these dwarf creatures. These dwarves only live for a year each. I also quite like that uh, they don't, they're not just raiding random items, they're things that have been left here specifically for people to find later on, they're hoping people will get use out of them. And that's exactly what we're doing, so it's not just stealing some random gloves we find, someone put those gloves there. As a, just, that's just a random example of something that really, but... And you have another little snail wandering around as well, which is also really cute. It feels less like the whole RPG staple of, oh, just break into people's houses and throw all their pots around. <laughs> I quite like this exchange as well, this is pretty funny. Much like the other couple, the girl is just not having any of her, of her boyfriend's stick. It's just, you know what, I can still do magic, mate, you idiot. So quite like that she just did that to prove a point as well, no other reason. Just to prove she could. And yeah, this guy is the guy I was talking about earlier, I'd forgotten I hadn't unlocked him yet, to uh, warn us about the invisible bridges and everything like that. Just keeping an eye out on Lenore for when things like that happen. And yeah, this is a punishment room. Where are you ahead of you, mate? But it's good to have, though. Well, that's everything we've unlocked so far. So next time, we'll actually go to that other door we just unlocked, which is actually a, an entrance to the second part of the main dungeon of the Mountain of Souls. So join me next time as we go there. Goodbye.